Yellow. So many of us grew up watching the classic Toy Story series that made its first appearance back in 1995. Woody and his friends have been coming out with more films following the first movie for many years now with the most recent one being Toy Story 4. Recently it was announced that Toy Story 5 is on the way with much anticipation from the fans that want to see what could possibly happen next in the world of our favorite animated characters. With the exciting news of Toy Story 5 coming soon I wanted to explore some of the hidden secrets that Pixar has cleverly placed throughout the Toy Story series. By examining these we gain some insight into the hidden gems that Pixar Studio likes to hide and what we could possibly expect from the upcoming movie. Let's start out with some of the undiscovered treasures Pixar hides in tribute to other movies. There have been many times when Pixar pays homage to their movie A Bug's Life. Jerry, from the famous Pixar short Jerry's Game, that played before A Bug's Life, is also the man who cleans up Woody to sell in Toy Story 2. Also in Toy Story 2, Mrs. Potato Head can be seen reading a Bug's Life storybook. Another one is when Flick, a character from A Bug's Life, appears as a toy on the ground in Owl's Toy Barn. There is also a calendar that is shown having a picture from a scene in A Bug's Life. During one of the scenes where Woody climbs into the ceiling, the letters on the wall spell out Ada, the name of the princess in A Bug's Life. Pixar's movie Up is also referenced. In Toy Story 3, while in Annie's room, you can see pinned on his board a postcard addressed to Carl and Ellie from the film Up. The Grape Soda Ellie badge from Up can also be spotted next to Bo Peep. Even the evil pink teddy bear named Lotso can be seen on the floor in the movie Up when the house starts to fly away. The movie Monsters Inc. created by Pixar also has a few cameos. In Toy Story 4 you can see the character Boo from Monsters Inc. playing carnival games. The logo of Monsters Inc. was displayed on the door of Andy's room in Toy Story 3. Finding Nemo also makes many appearances in the Toy Story franchise. In Toy Story Story 3, if you look closely at the wagon style toy chest in Andy's room, you'll see a sticker of a certain clownfish that looks very similar to Nemo. Mr. Ray, Nemo's blue and white spotted Eagle Ray singing teacher, can be seen at the Sunnyside Daycare. In the antique store, you'll see not one, but two Finding Nemo references. The goggles that the Marlin uses to find his son, and the tiki heads that appear in the fish tank in Finding Nemo. In Toy Story 3, it has a scene where it shows a magazine that features Darla, the girl from Finding Nemo who shook her fish bag too much. Pixar's movie Cars has a few shoutouts as well. In Toy Story 3, Lightning McQueen from Cars can be spotted on the ground in the daycare as well as the tractor from Cars. Also, one of the little kids in the daycare is wearing a Lightning McQueen t-shirt. If you paid attention to the movie Wall-E, you would notice a reference in it to Toy Story 3. When Buzz Lightyear gets his battery compartment opened up, you will recognize it's the same logo from the fictional company By and Large, which plays a prominent part in the film Wall-E. A nice Easter egg related to Pixar's movie Coco can be seen in Toy Story 4. While Buzz is hanging around in a carnival game, you can spot a toy guitar that has the same design as the one Miguel teaches himself how to play in the movie Coco. Surprisingly, Toy Story actually pays homage to a non-Pixar horror movie called The Shining that came out in the 1980s directed by Stanley Kubrick. If you look at the carpet in Sid's house, it's the same design as the carpet in The Shining. This could be a subliminal message to the audience that Sid's house is not a nice place to be. Another reference from The Shining is the number 237 that appears numerous times throughout the Toy Story franchise. 237 is the number of the infamous haunted room in The Shining. The garbage truck in Toy Story 3 has a license plate that says RM237. The model of a security camera in the Sunnyside Daycare also says R237. There's also a very similar radio that's shown in Toy Story that looks very close to the one in The Shining. And a tissue box that shares the same carpet pattern seen in The Shining. Another movie not related to Pixar that had an appearance was Ridley Scott's Alien. In the first Toy Story, the Whack-A-Mole inspired game at the Pizza Planet is a reference to the iconic chest burster scene in the movie Alien. Being that Pixar loves to hide in hidden secrets linked to other films, it will be interesting to see what other tributes and movie references we will see in Toy Story 5. One of the big things that Pixar has done in the Toy Story franchise is pay tribute to their 
own studio and team of talented artists. In Toy Story 3, the map in Andy's bedroom has pins dotted all over it. These pins correspond to the hometowns of the production team. In the train scene, the number on the front of it is 95, the same year the first Toy Story film was released in theaters. On the cork board inside Andy's room, one of the envelopes posted on it shows the address of Pixar's studio. Also inside Andy's room, you can see a street sign that says Cutting Boulevard, which is the street where Pixar was originally located in Richmond, California. Toy Story 2 features a scene where it may look like a regular sketch of any map, but the address for Al's toy barn shows 1001 West Cutting Boulevard to give yet another shout out to the location of Pixar Studio. There is even a pendant that reads PU which refers to Pixar University, the company's professional development program. There's a phrase in Sid's backpack that reads Julie McBarfel has cooties. This is a nod to the camera manager Julie McDonald who requests to have her name appear in some part of the movie. The license plate on the beat up Toyota truck reads Res 1536 which is a reference to the resolution the film was rendered in. Also, on the rear windshield, there's a sticker for a radio station called Krat FM, which is homage to the art director Tia Kratter. There is a scene with a magazine that shows the date January 12, 1957 in the bottom left corner. This is also the date that one of the directors of Toy Story, John Lasseter, was born. When Woody is giving a speech to his friends, the books behind him have the titles of previous Pixar short films on them. If you look even closer, these books have Lasseter as their author, another tribute to the director of the movie. A113, pronounced as A113, was the number of the class attended by students of character animation at the California Institute of the Arts. Many of the alumni got employed by Pixar. This number, A113, was randomly scattered in many of the Pixar films. With so many specially placed secrets dedicated to the team at Pixar, I'm sure we'll see more in the upcoming movie Toy Story 5. Some other random easter eggs hidden throughout the Toy Story franchise were ones like how Andy Andy's handwriting improves on the bottom of the toy shoes as he gets older. When Mr. Potato Head yells at a hockey puck, this actually had a hidden meaning behind it. Don Rickles, who voiced Mr. Potato Head, used hockey puck as an insult for decades in his stand-up comedy career. Buzz Lightyear's original name was Lunar Larry. After many discussions by Disney and Pixar, they decided Lunar Larry sounded too wacky and went with the name Buzz Lightyear to honor the astronaut Buzz Aldrin. If you take a close close look at Sid and then the Garbage Man, you notice they have very similar features and could possibly be related. Also, if you pay attention to the scene where Andy and his friends are at the bottom of the stairs, you notice that they actually all share the same face as Andy. These are just some of the many easter eggs and hidden gems throughout the Toy Story franchise that give us clues as to what appearances we may see in the upcoming Toy Story 5. Make sure next time you find yourself watching any Toy Story movie to keep a lookout for any hidden secrets that you might notice. Thanks again so much for watching the Brain Booster Lounge. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. I'll be dropping new content for you every week.